A dream of every structural engineer is to create structures with the greatest strength, minimum weight and minimum amount of material. Honeycomb sandwich or reinforced structures are often used to achieve these outcomes and are used in aerospace, automotive and other industries. So in this video I will explain you how to model such a structure using Fusion 360. So we are going to model an outer ring and we are going to increase the rigidity of this ring by adding a honeycomb internal structure. Similar principles can be used in other applications to increase the rigidity of the object. To model this object, we are going to use a parametric approach explained in my previous video. You can find the link to this video in the description below. So, the shape and the dimensions and the general uh, appearance of this structure is determined by five parameters. These parameters are the diameter of the circle around which the hexagonal structure is defined, then the thickness of the wall, then the height of the structure, and the inner and the outer diameters of circles. Okay, so let us start the design process. First, we create a new component. Okay, here is our new component. Then, we need to define the system parameters. So we click on modify and we click on change parameters. And here we are going to define the system parameters. So we click on a plus sign and then we add the first parameter. The first parameter is the diameter of a circle around which the hexagonal honeycomb is described. And we are going to enter the value of 10 and we defined the remaining four parameters. This is the wall thickness, it's going to be equal to two. The height of a structure, it's going to be equal to five. And we need to define the diameters of the ring. They're going to be diameter one value is going to be 60 and the final diameter is the outer diameter of a ring and its value is going to be 2 plus diameter 1 actually plus we need to add the wall value. Our strategy for creating this object is to first sketch the two-dimensional geometry and then we are going to extrude such geometry. So we click on component and we click on create sketch and then we select the XY plane. So here we are, we are in the XY plane. Now we click on create and we can choose different uh, shapes. So let's click on polygon and we click on this option so here is our polygon and then we're just going to click and the next step is to assign the parameter value to this polygon here it is and we are going to assign the value of diameter Here it is. Next, we are going to offset this polygon. So we'll click on the offset button. We click here and we select the offset position equal to the wall. Here it is. Let me click on OK. OK, so here is our structure. 
Next, we need to draw two construction lines. These construction lines will be used to copy and paste this object along certain pattern. So we need to construct two construction lines. So we click on construction, we click on line, and here is our line. The line should be made under 60 degrees with respect to the x-axis. So here is the first construction line. Then we create the second construction line. So here is our second construction line. Ne the next step is to extrude this two-dimensional geometry. So we click on finish sketch. We click on the home icon that will bring us to isometric view and we click on extrude and by clicking here we can obtain the extrude menu and we are going to select the distance equal to the height and we click OK. OK so here is our 3D object this is the first honeycomb. Now we will return to the sketch plane by clicking right click and then click on edit sketch and here is our structure again however we are not going to copy and paste this uh, structure in the sketch uh, plane instead we are going to return back to our plane and we are going to extrude from the top view of this object. Not extrude, we are going to basically copy and paste from the top view of this object. By clicking on the top view, we are going to obtain the top view of the object. Now, here it's very important to make the sketch visible such that we can see the construction lines. These construction lines will be very important for our next step. So our next step is to create the pattern, to copy and paste this structure along the pattern. So we click on create, we click on pattern, and we click on the rectangular pattern. Here is our rectangular pattern menu. So the pattern type should be bodies it's, since we are copy and pasting bodies. Object, we click on select and we select the object. Now, uh, directions, we click here and we select the directions we select two construction lines then the distance type should be spacing quantity we are going to adjust the quantity later uh, the distance should be diameter plus wall and you can clearly see what happens once you enter the parameter values you can see how the patterns are being formed also in another direction we select diameter plus fall and you can clearly see how the patterns are being formed. Now the quantity we are going to select 10 and 10 and we are going to select patterns in two directions. Symmetric patterns. So let us decrease the number of patterns let's say in one direction, let's say 8, in another direction we need to select 8 again. So you see what happens, the pattern size is automatically being adjust, adjusted. And we click on OK. So here is our pattern. We can see it in isometric view. So the next step is to combine the bodies. So here are our bodies. So this is body 1 and if you scroll down here is body 64. So we need to select all of them. So we click on body 1 and by holding shift we click on body 64 and then we click on combine and we click on OK. Okay, good. So, all of our bodies are combined into a single body. Here it is. And these bodies are assigned to 
a new component. So the original body is over here. This is the original body and the joint body or the combined body is assigned to a new component and can be found under the component 2. Since we don't need the original body anymore, we are going to make it invisible by clicking over here. So body 1 is now invisible, here is body 2. The next step is to extrude the outer ring. So we are going to click on the top view and we are going to click, we are going to make sketch 1 visible visible over here and we're going to create two circles so we're going to click over here we're going to click on edit sketch and then we're going to add two circles so here's the first circle here's the second circle and let's adjust the diameter so we adjust the diameter by clicking over here so this will be diameter 1 and let's click on enter next we adjust the second diameter this will be the second diameter here's our second diameter here it is now uh, what I can observe here is that the outer diameter is too thin so I'm going to I deviate a little bit from the specifications. I'm going to put 65 millimeters. Good. So let's finish the sketch. Great. So this is how the structure will look in three dimensions. So let us click on the isometric view and our next step is to extrude the structure. So we're going to click on the ring and we're going to click on the height equal to the height parameter. Great. Here is our outer circle. Our next step is to divide the pattern body, this body over here, into two parts. These bodies will be divided using the plane, the inner plane of the ring. So how are we going to do that? We click on Modify, we click on Split Body, and first we select the Pattern Body. And then we select the Splitting Tool, and as a Splitting Tool, we are going to select the inner plane of the ring. And we are going to click on OK. Now we have four bodies. We have Body 1, here is the Body 1, we have body 2, the second part of the previous body 1. Then we have body 65, the fourth body, which is our ring. And we have the original body, the original hexagonal over here. Now, the next step is to move the part that we don't need. So we don't need this part. So we're going to click on body 1 and we're going to click on move and copy. And we are just going to click on free move, the option over here, and we are just going to move it vertically. So we are moving body, we are moving the part we don't need. Don't be confused uh, by the pattern that you can see over here. This is just a shadow. This is just a shadow. Okay. And then the final step, we can need to click on OK. Don't forget to click on OK. So the final step is to join the ring and the inner pattern. So we are going to combine them. We're going to combine and we're going to join, join them and we should join them as a new component. And let's click OK. Great. So let us make all the bodies invisible that we don't need. Okay. And here is our final component. So here is our final component. 
So we can make our final body visible or invisible by clicking on activate the component. So now it's visible. So here is our body. Here's our final structure. We can rotate to see the shape. Looks pretty good. Now, uh, we can also adjust the if we want, we can adjust the material properties. So we can click on appearance and then we can assign, um, let's say, bronze. If you want to change the color or let's say bronze or brass, depending on what you like. You can also export this as an STL file or save it as a new object in a new file.